Persepolis Sound and Light Show. Listen. Listen to the night. The vast peace of silence. For more than 2,000 years, the moon has risen over the glorious ruins of Persepolis. Persepolis, the sacred capital of the kingdom of purity, the citadel of the Persians, a citadel with no outside fortifications, a citadel of peace, of which Cyrus, king of kings and king of justice, designed the plans, and which Darius the Great elevated and was unable to finish. Who is it that speaks? Who am I? I am Artaxerxes the second. I was a man of 86 winters when I was laid to rest here in my coffin of black marble in the heart of this granite tomb cut in the mountain. Why couldn't you finish Persepolis? You ask me that. When I had so many wives. <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention a certain Greek named Xenophon whom I had defeated and who, at the head of his 10,000 surviving mercenaries, beat a famous retreat that preoccupied me somewhat. I have read of their prowess in our library, 30,000 graven tablets that were here in the very spot where our guests are this evening. When, like now, Anahita the moon went to rest, I returned to my tomb enriched by what my reading had taught me. It is not for nothing that the Greeks called me Menon, the man with the fine memory. And when we deciphered those clay tablets? Not without difficulty. <laughs> yes, not without difficulty. They seem to contain nothing but nail marks. The tablets unearthed here taught us many things. They provided us with the key to all the others that were found between the river Tigris and the Euphrates. We brought to the world much more than the secret of cuneiform writing. Listen. Listen as in the past to the city awakening and rising from the desert. She is alive in her wonderful solitude. Listen to what my ears have so often heard. Listen to this schoolmaster. 
children, there is no longer any point in counting on your fingers. From now on, like the Assyrians, we shall divide time into 12 equal parts, or rather, two times 12 parts. Ah, oh, so we'll count the hours in dozens. Good boy, that's right. After all, doesn't the sun have 12 dwelling places? And the flowers that grace the royal staircase, 12 petals? Weights and measures will be the same throughout the empire. And the profile of the king will be graven on every piece of money. But that did not prevent the gold pieces flying away from me. Over there, the gardeners are already at work on the roofs and terraces of the palaces. I want to plant only the flowers, vegetables and fruits that are born and produced here. Roses and lilacs, hyacinths and lilies, and tulips, graceful and fresh as maidens. In the kitchen garden, we'll have green spinach and purple-blue eggplants. And in the orchard, I shall plant peach trees and orange trees. Oh, I was forgetting. The chicken run for the fowls we have finally managed to tame. We'll certainly be having eggs by the dozen. This private garden is paradise. Yes, you owe even that word to us. The post must never stop. established relay stations all along the Imperial Highways so that couriers could exchange our ideas and bring our hearts closer together. Build the steps low enough and wide enough for horsemen to climb them without dismounting. What? You have erected only 14 columns out of 72? Make haste, for the Syrians have already brought the cedars for the beams. Here in the throne room, you will erect ten times ten columns, but not in stone this time, in teak and cedar. This one's ready to be mounted. You've already been paid half your wages in sheep and wine. Here is the other half in silver shekels. Humble thanks to the king. Let the work now cease. Today is a holiday. Now, as once a year and every year, is come the great day of renewal. Persian officers and by Medes who have taken them by the hand. The ambassadors and envoys from all the countries of the empire are solemnly moving forward. They have come from the valley of the Indus and the banks of the Danube, from the steppes of Turkestan and from the valley of the Nile. And bowing before King Darius, it is to the greatest of the gods, Ahura Mazda that the 28 nations of the Persian Empire are coming to pay homage. Aloof in his majesty, Darius the Achaemenid, successor to great King Cyrus, the King of Kings, appears. He holds a lotus in his hand. 
Open the gates guarded by winged bulls with human heads. Open! Shake the dust from your sandals. Let them approach. Let them move forward and pass before the bull goring the lion. comes the procession of the ambassadors, their beards in ringlets, their hair curved. The long procession towards the stairways of stone and black marble, guarded by the lances of our royal guard, the 10,000 immortals. The long train of the horsemen from the steppes and the Arab camel drivers moving toward the tall forest of stone columns that reach to the sky in a gesture of prayer. from Egypt. They are bringing you their tribute. Kine and cloth, silver and lead. Let a temple to the god Ammon be built at the oasis of Thebes. I also command that a canal be dug from the river known as the Nile, which flows in Egypt, to the sea which bathes the shores of Persia. You shall accomplish this work, inspired by the great god Ahura Mazda, creator of heaven and earth, creator of man, and creator of the joy he bestows upon them. The Aeolians and the Aeolians, living on land and sea, bring you their rams and amber chalices. Libyans and the Phrygians, leading their cattle and horses. And please, O King, come from Jerusalem. I command that the Jews of Jerusalem be given full liberty to build their temple and that the cost be borne by my treasury. And when I reconquered Cyprus and the Greek colonies of Asia, I too left them all their liberties. Ahura Mazda has deigned, through the words of my mouth, to allow his image to cohabit with those of the Greek gods on coins. The Abyssinians and the Ethiopians are laying their elephant tusks at your feet, O King. The Lydians are bringing the gold of the Pactolus, that renowned torrent that rolls along heavy nuggets in its waters. I command that henceforth a road shall link Sardis, capital of Lydia, to my own city of Susa. A caravan shall take three months to cross this distance, which our couriers cross in seven days, thanks to the 111 relay stations that shall be established on the way. Let my special emissaries see that all this be accomplished according to my will. Your emissaries are your eyes and ears, O King. Look, Your Majesty. The ambassadors of Babylon are bowed beneath the weight of the gold and silver they bear. And the Indians are bringing their precious stones, their cotton, and their spices.
Scythians, I know you by your pointed helmets, as I know the origin of all those who crowd upon the royal stairs, the Armenians and the Caspians who come on horseback, the Arabs and the Syrians, you Parthians on your camels, and you emissaries of Thrace, Cappadocia, and Sicates, resplendent in your pantaloons. And what is your message this year, O King? Know that I am the friend of what is just, that I am not the friend of what is unjust. I am the enemy of the cruel who persecute the weak. Know this also, he who is loyal I shall treat well, he who rebels shall be punished. Upon the cliff I have caused to be graven in three languages the names of the 32 provinces which you represent and to which I have brought peace, truth and freedom to live. Thus proclaims King Darius, you who in days to come shall read this inscription that I have carved into the rock, to the rock, neither efface, neither nor, efface destroy it. nor destroy it. As long as, posterity, as long as posterity shall remain, preserve these words intact. And they have remained intact. And now, since the sun has sunk below the horizon, enter. With the help of Ahura Mazda, the greatest of the gods, I have made this palace strong and sumptuous, grandiose and dazzling, because the joy fitting to kings is founded on grandeur. Thanks to thee, O God, the sun doth run his course, the moon doth tread her path, the stars are born and die. Praised be the pure spirits of the Persians. And you, men of today, gazing at these ruins you can imagine what they once were was it time that destroyed persepolis i do not know was i dreaming the night alexander the great came here did the greek conqueror darius the third dare to trample the soil of our sacred city with the feet of his macedonian phalanxes was it a dream a nightmare Yes, a nightmare. I had been gone from the world of men 28 years, when one light night, a night such as this, I thought I heard. Thanks to 
for your valor, grief is avenged. Yeah. You are the master of the Persian Empire. Yeah. And we are drinking the wine of King Darius from his golden cup. But that is not enough. What more would you have, Thais? Make a bonfire of joy of the dwelling of King Xerxes who once burned Athens! Such a vengeance! We must not perpetuate hatred between peoples. Think of the flames that destroyed the temple of Athena! It is the goddess herself who speaks through my lips. According to your wish, so be it. Alexander, who married my granddaughter, Parisatis. Alexander, who gave the defeated Darius a royal burial. Alexander, who styled himself the heir of King Cyrus the Achaemenid. Surely I was dreaming. And yet, my feet scuffled the ashes on the ground. Yes. You were dreaming, O king. I often dream thus. I dream in death. And in my dreams, I ask this question of Ahura Mazda, greatest of the gods. Not all these bodies are clothed in marble or granite. How then, O god, shalt thou, at the appointed time, Make to live again the corpses consumed by the fire, blown on the winds, or swept away by the waters of rivers and seas. When I created the light, when I created the heavens as no pillar bears, when I created the earth, the sun, the moon. When I created the corn that is put into the earth and flourisheth there. When I created life. Dost thou not think, King Artaxerxes, that this creation was harder than the resurrection? When all things shall awaken to eternal life, I see a great fire coming down from the infinite stars 
and illumining the whole world with its brightness. Thou speakest true this time. Arise, O beings of flesh. For those who ascend to paradise, Shall not the branches of the trees become the four steps in a golden firmament leading to thee, leading to the sun, O God of light and life? So be it, O King. And behold the greatest of the kings, the wise and just Cyrus the Achaemenid shall ascend towards me. Behold, Lord, I am here. I have rejoiced in thy pious deeds. Thou didst found all upon the dignity of man. That is to say, upon respect for my creatures. I have worshipped thee, I, my sons, and all my soldiers. We have exalted thy divinity with all our hearts. I entered into Babylon to the joyful shouts of an entire people. I entered into the city without spilling a drop of blood, without fire, pillage, and killing. I showed mercy to every dethroned king, to all peoples, I brought freedom and joy. If a king be a good king, the world is at right. Vice diminisheth and virtue groweth, and people become happy and rich. So I, Ahura Mazda, the almighty God, have chosen thee, Cyrus. I have taken thee by the hand I have called thy name, and I have made thee master of the earth. The night that goeth before the renewal shall be dark and oppressive. The night that goeth before the renewal shall be dark and oppressive. When the first step shall light, it will still be winter. The trees, like the flesh, shall be naked, black, and dead. The trees, like the flesh, shall be naked, black, and dead. At the second step, as at the moment of renewal, the trees shall be laden with flowers, and the flesh shall begin to live again. The trees shall be laden with flowers, and the flesh shall begin to live again. At the third step, the fruits shall ripen, and those who henceforth shall have eternal life shall ascend toward me. The fruits shall ripen, and those who henceforth shall have eternal life shall ascend toward me. At the fourth step, the step of transfiguration, the fruits shall be ready for the harvest. Each just man shall be given a flowered branch, each bad man a dried up root, and they shall be separated for eternity. Thanks to thy splendor and magnificence, the waters flow forever. Fruit abounds throughout the earth. Children come into the world. Thanks to thy splendor and magnificence. Cyrus and Darius shall not die. They shall live forever. 
They are eternal beneath the hand of God, in a Persia that is eternal as they are. The spirit of their thought haunts not only Persepolis, it fills the past, and their noble shades are etched upon the future. Sleeping in tents. What are you? This is just uh, just outside Persepolis. I think they're waiting to see the sh uh, Persepolis tomorrow morning.